Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a Magic the Gathering player I absolutely hate. I've hated him for a long time. Hate is a very strong term, but I recently interacted with him a month ago when he found my YouTube channel and he is still a douchebag. He's still the biggest blankly blank blank person I know. Now let me go back to when I was in Virginia. I was there for grad school, there for law school at William and Mary. And William and Mary is a really nice school, but it's located in Williamsburg. And it's so it's in the middle of nowhere and it's a retirement community. So there's not many, there's only one magic store in the whole city, right? Uh, Groovy Geckos. Now, this guy, so anyone who plays there plays at Groovy Geckos. And this guy, um, I think he was about my age, maybe a little younger. Um, he was really into magic and he played at Groovy Geckos. I met him pretty much in the beginning of the time and then eventually he stopped playing there. I think maybe he went to college, back to college or grad school or something like that. He would just shark people all the time. And it wasn't just um, sharking, it was I'm better than you because I have better cards than you and that makes me the right to shark you. I remember this one time when a guy, a super casual dude, a much older dude, and he loves angels and he wants to increase his angel collection. And he has a really good angel collection and I think it was angels, dragons, uh, it was just playing the clear of the vast and demon. So he was collecting those and he had a Liliana of the Veil. At that time, Lily was only worth $25. I know it's really hard to imagine, but it was definitely a good time to pick up Lily's. And he essentially sharked the dude and gave him like, you know, you hear so many stories of people trading bulk angels and demons. I know I would say like, well, how does this happen? Like it never happens, right? But this, it happened. And then he traded for other planeswalkers. I think Garouk, the flip Garouk was also popular at the time. The Sea Chrome Coast were very good. That was Sea Chrome Coast was a $20 card. Believe it or not, like it was $20 at the time. And he would trade for those, uh, drag him away for those. And essentially the guy was just, um, he was also like, uh, when he would play, so he almost never played, he only went there to trade. There was a lot of the cheating stuff he would do. Um, he would play uh, foreign cards and misrepresent the card. Like, cause I would play, I would be like, hey dude, that's not what the card does. I own this card. Like uh, for a Geist of St. Trap, when it attacks, the Geist attacks, you get 4-4 four, four Angel only that turn when it, it comes in attacking. But he would keep the 4-4 four, four Angel because his playset was foil Japanese or foil Korean or Russian, whatever it was, Geist. And against younger players and against less experienced players, that Angel came out the whole time. It never like left. And then he would attack again and who would attack for one. It was just OP, 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 because he would play foreign cards and no one would know like if, and back in that day, like at the Groovy Gecko, it's again, it's very small community. I had two Geist and pretty much no one had any other Geist and Geist was the strongest card at the time. He would also play um, his sideboard in foil. Um, certain cards would be in foil and then he would just stack the deck. Like I clearly understand what he's doing now. Back then I really didn't know, but now I get why certain cards in his sideboard were foil because then he could, you know, they, you can see like the bends. Um, and he would always complain, oh, my foil cards get like uh, bent all the time, blah, blah, blah. You know, I really wish I had regular copies of it. He had regular copies, uh, but most obnoxious of all, he had this trade binder and the trade binder, again, very small store, probably at most uh, anyone else's binder is like uh, $200 of standard stuff. He would bring his trade binder of $15,000 of stuff and he would bring it every single time and then he would rub it in your face. He would be like, oh, you know, I'm amazing because somehow I've accumulated all these Magic the Gathering cards and that makes me better. Do you imagine my surprise when he sends me a message or he comments on one of my videos? I'm sure he'll make a, you know, a fifth profile and then I'll have to block that fifth pro profile again. And it was insane. Like it, the guy is psychopathic. Like I knew it back then and he still hasn't changed today. I and mean, he's still living there at Williamsburg, which again, small community, like really difficult to describe. But when you are in such a small community, everyone knows 
everyone else. And they know what decks they play, and they know who to stay away from, and they know who the deuce back is. And in this case, he was absolutely the worst. Like, I have not run into a player quite like him before. I mean, there are players in, you know, Humble and Houston who I can I don't want to play against and I don't like them, but nothing like this where the guy is actively scamming little children, um, taking advantage of you know the fact that he thinks he's popular and because he has a large trade binder and also just his general um, cheatingness and scamminess and overall um, inability to make magic fun. I mean, it just destroyed the community. And, you know, that was very, very sad. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.